Welcome back to the 10th episode of the Chaos Profile. In the previous episode, I ended things off with a bizarre finally back after three episodes without it, which allowed me to flip my way to a full set of unstable dragon armor. I don't quite meet the combat requirements, however, and before I do get started on grinding combat levels, I completed my experiments for today. Okay, mm yep. There it is. Enchanting 20, yep. Go, bro. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? F boy. Off. F Fuck off. F Fuck off. Nah, bro, what? Why would you do that? Uh, you know, to be fair, okay, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, okay. Uh, reaction, uh, overreaction out of the way. I am quite happy with what I did while the bazaar was still open. You know, I got my flips and I got some money, so I have a little bit of money in the purse now. I just can't do minion slots, which is fine because I've already got my 10 redstone minions. The community shop is still available, so I could still claim my profile upgrades. So like, it's okay, we can go Iron Man for a little bit, right? Oh yeah, one last thing to show you guys. Um, I did go to the Jerry Island while it was open because I figured, oh, the Jerry Island's open. Let me do that real quick. I got the gifts, I got the frosted snow cannon thing, and I got the fairy souls. So that's one more fairy soul island. Well, what I do want to do now is I want to level up some skills. I need to level some skills, but I can't do that with one item rarity. So if you don't recall from the past episodes, I've been stuck to the blue rarity for all my important items thus far. This includes my weapons, armor, tools, and other miscellaneous things such as a grappling hook or a power orb. And if you didn't already know, I can't exactly get access to any tools that fit this rarity. Now I had already gone numerous episodes with the blue rarity and as a result, I did more combat oriented things and also collected fairy souls. In order to keep these episodes fresh and exciting though, I decided to bend the rules just slightly here and I've changed my locked rarity from blue to green, disabling my AOTE and my artisanal shortbow, but it enables all diamond tools, my grappling hook, and some other items. I figured this was reasonable as I can still use only one item rarity, and seeing that this was a new day, a new stream, and a new episode, I felt like it was the right decision overall. So now that these changes have been put in place, it was time to pick the first skill to get started leveling. Okay, well, first skill that I want to get is actually my combat skill. And <laughs> I'm gonna do that with my pickaxe. And the way I'm going to do that is actually really interesting. You guys probably know where this is going if you've seen my my videos before. But before I go to the Dwarven Mines, I do want to get a couple of diamonds. Just quickly here. Craft some more tools now if I need to do that. But for now, I only need the pickaxe. Because Ice Walkers take like 888 damage to pickaxes or something. I don't know, they, t they take a significantly higher amount of damage to, to pickaxes. Boosted pickaxe damage is a pretty well-known game mechanic, but a less-known game mechanic regarding the Ice Walkers is how much combat XP they actually give you. The beauty about farming Ice Walkers early game is how simple the setup really is. All you need is a diamond pickaxe, the Dwarven Mines unlocked, and you're literally good to go. There are other factors that come into play, such as needing an empty lobby and ideally some sort of ranged weapon to help you aggro the mobs. But aside from that, these guys grant you 40 combat XP per kill, and with the spawn rates at the Great Ice Wall, this leads to some really good combat XP rates per hour. So, all that was left now was to swap through Dorwin mine lobbies until I found one without an AFK. -er. Is someone AFKing? Nah, no, there's no one AFKing. That's good, He's, he, he'll leave soon. Let's walk a what? Go away. Okay. Kill you. Die. Oh, that was bad. Okay, 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 okay. What did happen? <laughs> I am so bad at this, bro. Don't you? Uh, oh, whatever, bro. Whatever. I don't care. That's good. Beast area level three. Let's go. Is that a spin? I don't think so. Let's... Combat 10. Oh, it's a spin. That's a spin. Wait, okay. Combat 10. Combat 10. That that literally doesn't make... How much money have I got? How much money have I got again? 5.2k. That is depressing. That is depressing. Okay, whatever. I'm going to clear up how the white purse modifier actually works because you'll notice that with the rest of my footage here, I didn't clear out my purse and just continue to farm ice walkers. 
So basically, when it comes to this modifier, if I'm in the middle of something important or don't want to leave the area I'm in, then what I do is I write down how much money is in my purse at the time of the spin on a separate notepad on my computer. Then, after I'm finished with whatever I was doing, I go to a random public hub, I make sure the people in my Twitch chat can see it, and then the first person to send me a trade request gets all the money that's in my purse, or all the money that I wrote down on that notepad. I figured this was the easiest way to get rid of money on my account, because not only is it really simple, but it also just doesn't void or waste the money at all, so that's always nice. Regardless, this ice walker grind was honestly a really fun one. I sat on the great ice wall for a long time, just cycling through ice walkers over and over again. Every now and then, you'd get a random guy who'd come in to complete their 100 Ice Walker kills commission, but aside from that, the grind was smooth and just overall quite peaceful. Or something. Combat 11! GG, I can do more damage to mobs, and I have crit chance. Yo, Combat 12! <laughs> no way! Magic Find 4 potion! That's so cool. Okay. Well, I hit, I hit combat 12, and I just checked my skill average, and we're above skill average 10. So, let's, um, quickly spin. I'm not even upset about spinning anymore. Like, I actually don't need anything. I, I could get, like, the worst modifiers in the world, and I'd be chilling right now. Hey, Let's go! Let's go! Yes! Yes! Wait, what do I remove, though? What do I remove? What do I get rid of? I'm actually really happy with my modifiers right now. I don't even know what I want to get rid of. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? This is actually OP. This is OP. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, 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 okay. Let's think this through. Let's think this through. Let's think this through. This couldn't have been a more ideal spin. But like I said, I honestly had no clue what to use this remove one modifier on. I went back and forth with my Twitch chat and eventually ended up making a poll to decide what to get rid of. And after a little while, we came to the conclusion that one item rarity was far more limiting than the bizarre being disabled or any of the modifiers on this list. Yeah, we're getting rid of this. Okay. One item rarity has been chosen. There. I now have gear again. Why are you wearing the same armor as me? Well, you have max or Yo, strength and resistance. No way, I'm getting a god splash. Guys, I'm getting a god splash. This is so cool. Combat 13. Easy collapse. We're like three levels away, bro. Why are you god splashing me? This guy's high. This guy's high. Why are you god splashing me? This guy's crazy. He gave me random tier A potions. <gasps> Combat 14. Yo, Glacier Jewel. Oh, sh- Uh, let's go again. Iron Man. Iron Man real quick. Iron Man real quick. <gasps> no way. No way. What did I tell you, bro? What did I tell you? I told you before I land on Bizarre to Sail, but I've landed on Bizarre to Sail, but now the Bizarre is back. Guys, no way, no way, guys, no way. That's so cracked. <laughs> That's so cracked, bro. It's like my fourth time. It's my fourth time I've landed on that. What the hell? Combat 15. Let's go. Okay, 30k XP to go. At this point, I had been grinding Ice Walkers for well over an hour and a half, and the grind was slowly coming to a close. I was one level away, only 30,000 more combat XP left until I could use that beautiful unstable dragon armor, but I figured I'd take a short break for the end of the grind and I went back to the hub to auction some things. I sold all of my Glacite jewels, the Glacite armor drops, and a rainbow rune I found, but then I realized that I couldn't even claim all my auctions after they had sold because otherwise I'd have well over a million coins in the bank. I hadn't yet reached the 1 million coin milestone on this profile yet, so claiming my auctions would have guaranteed a spin. I thought about it for a bit, and then decided that I'd just bite the bullet and take the spin anyways, because after all, I was going to have to reach a million coins at some point on this profile. I also took the opportunity to sell off the Jerry boxes I earned whilst Jerry was mayor, which brought my total coin count to just over 2 million in total. We have 2.1 mil in the purse, Jesus Christ. Let's spin. The million coin spin. Is it going to disable the bazaar? It's going to disable my backpacks. Alright, well... That's moderately inconvenient, but, um, we move, we move, we move. Having no extra storage at all times was slightly annoying, but it wasn't going to stop me from finishing off that Ice Walker grind. I made my way back to the Dwarven Mines, reached that beautiful Combat 16 milestone, and then got straight to enchanting the Unstable set. I slapped on some basic enchantment table enchants, threw on the Fierce Reforge, and I also enchanted the rabbit hat I was using because I figured if it's on the wheel and I'll likely end up using it, I'll go ahead and enchant it nicely too. 
Next, it was time to spin the wheel, as Unstable Dragon Armor was classified as my first proper armor set, and we got clean tools only. Not too bad of a modifier. But of course, what would brand new weapon and armor upgrades look like without a damage test? So I took my newly acquired gear to the graveyard, and I hit some zombies with it. Damage test with my... epic armor set. <laughs> That's so miserable. 860. Please give me like... 2.9k crit. If I can hit a 100% crit chance, then my damage is okay. 4k? Jesus Christ, that was with my my um, AOTE teleport. Mad. Talisman bag check? Yeah, we need to fix that. And so my next goal was to acquire some new talismans and beef up our damage even more. Alongside hopefully getting enough crit chance to crit every single time. I started things by doing both the Woodlands race and the End race, as the Wolf Paw and the Pig's Foot Talismans were free and easy to get. Both of these Talismans would warrant spins, as they were one-of-a-kind quest Talismans, with the Wolf Paw giving me the starter Talismans Reforge modifier, and the Pig's Foot very unfortunately forcing me to go Iron Man. Honestly, this couldn't have been a more inconvenient modifier, because now that I had no auction house or bazaar, filling my talisman bag was going to be a huge pain. There was nothing that I could do about it now though, and this is going to be a problem for me to tackle in the next episode.